FBI warning the Federal Bureau of Idiots does not give a shit if you reproduce, distribute, or exhibit this motion picture. Any copyrighted material found within this motion picture is used under fair use for non-profit educational purposes. If you are offended by any of the contents of this motion picture, it is highly recommended that you get your butthole examined as your head may be found therein. As pulling one's head out of one's ass can be a costly procedure, it is suggested that sensitive people not view this motion picture. The Brighamite tradition does not endorse the contents of this motion picture. The Joseph Smith III tradition does not endorse the contents of this motion picture. The Bickertonite tradition does not endorse the contents of this motion picture. The Stranite tradition does not endorse the contents of this motion picture. The Church of Jesus Christ of the Children of Zion does not endorse the contents of this motion picture. However, the Lord God, giving his will through the rod of nature, does in fact endorse the contents of this motion picture. Peace out, motherfuckers. Name, Nephi, height, 5 foot 7 inches, large in stature for the 7th century B.C., specialty, delusions, secondary specialty, hallucinations, birthplace, Jerusalem, grade, schizotypal personality disorder, known associates, Yahweh. Name, Layman and Lemuel. Height 5 foot 5 inches. Average for the 7th century BC. Specialty. Skepticism. Secondary specialty. Murmuring. Birthplace. Jerusalem. Grade. Torpedo retinkers. Known associates. Had an eye and Baal lights. Name. Lehi. Height. 5 foot 3 inches. Specialty. Quixotism. Secondary specialty. Hallucinations. Birthplace. Cool man K4. Why not? Grade. Paranoid schizophrenic. Known associates. A pillar of fire dwelling upon a rock. Name. Leyland. Height. 5 foot 7 inches. Specialty. Stiff neck nuts. Secondary specialty. Horbums. Birthplace. Solomon has Baldin's imagination. Grade. Homicide I victim. Special note. Due to frenzy caused by Laban's death, various sword control laws were implemented in Jerusalem, which sword control laws are widely believed to have greatly contributed to Jerusalem's inability to defend themselves against Nebuchadnezzar, the second sieges. And the rest. Privacy. Name, Yahweh, specialty, ignorance, secondary specialty, moral disengagement, birthplace, outside of the Pleroma, grade, the Gnostic Demiurge, secondary grade, the God of the Old Testament and the Book of Mormon.
common misconceptions. Though sometimes Yahweh gives rational and reasonable advice, he often through his ignorance of the true God contradicts himself and acts foolish. Name. Yahushua the Anointed. Yahushua HaMashiach. Jesus Christos. Specialty. Knowledge of the Unknown Father. Secondary Specialty. Everlasting Love. Birthplace. From the eons of the Pleroma. Grade. The logos of God and Heraclitus of the stones of Philo, John of Valentine Austin, and many others. Mission. In that he is the reasoning faculty of man, he inspires the pneumatic man through the induction of first principles, and the deductions therefrom to repair the misguided of Sophia of this world after the pattern of the Pleroma and to teach ethics to the psychic and highly men so the former can be saved in the latter and anathematized according to their works in short, he guides mankind to Moses. Name himself. A time traveling skeleton which only Joseph Smith can see. Specialty. Native American burial mounds. Secondary specialty. Death by arrow. Birthplace. In the collapsed star system where Joseph Smith's special seer powers reside. Grade. White of Demon Sun Lane and Knight who served under the great prophet Oman Dagus from whom in the world of Joseph Smith, the Oman Dada tribe, and the place in New York get their names. Show caught. Height. Three and one third cubits. Specialty. Erotic fantasies. Secondary specialty. Turning male members to stone. Birthplace. Psychosis. Grade. Incorporeal violet ghost. We, Lehman and Lemuel, having been born of visionary and superstitious parents, therefore, we were indoctrinated somewhat in the vain and foolish traditions of our father. And, in our days, having seen our brother Nephi afflicted with the same delusions as those of our father, yea, the selfsame madness which doth easily beset them, and causeth them to believe in that which is not real. Therefore we, knowing that this history shall be revealed by the means of gazing upon a stone in a hat, make not a record of the proceedings of our brother Nephi, nor those of his imaginary friend Yahweh. Verily, behold and lo, and lo and behold, it came to pass, and in passing it came. Verily, verily, I, layman, would that ye should know that my father dreamed a dream, or in other words, he did see a vision, in the which the imaginary friend commanded us to return to Jerusalem, in order that we might obtain the fables of our forefathers engraven upon plates of brass, so that my brother Nephi, might create a bugbear therefrom, yea, even a bugbear bearing the same name that Job had used to frighten the ignorant so as to lead them, according to their will, into captivity. Now it came to pass that we did offer, in exchange, to the owner of the brass plates, whose name was Laban, the rubbish which my father had acquired. Nevertheless, he, perceiving that rubbish hath no value, did laugh us to scorn, and did scatter us hither and thither. And it came to pass that about this time the shit of Nephi did become exceedingly fucked up, for, behold, he did smite us with a rod. Notwithstanding, he, professing himself to be an angel of the imaginary friend, did endeavor to tamper with our perception of reality. Yea, even he did accuse us of doing the smiting.
And it came to pass that Nephi, being led by the voices in his head, and not knowing beforehand the things which he should do, went forth towards the house of Laban. And as Nephi drew near unto the house of Laban, he beheld a man which fell to the earth before him, for he was drunken with wine. And Nephi found that it was Laban. And it came to pass that Nephi did struggle to draw forth the sword of Laban from the sheath thereof. For behold, the sheath was tight like unto a virgin. Yea, even so tight was the sheath that Nephi, with great frequency, did draw and did thrust. Yea, he did draw and did thrust with all his might, mind, and strength. And behold, the sheath did become loose and slippery, like unto Eriantum, which being interpreted is many waters. And after the sword had anointed the sheath with exceeding fine white shimmon, whose whiteness did exceed the whiteness of the driven snow, Nephi did draw forth the sword, and the workmanship thereof was exceedingly phallic. And Nephi did hear the voice of the imaginary friend, saying, Nephi, behold, I am the Lord thy God, yea, I am the God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob. Behold, I was with Moses when, after he had anointed himself with white shimmon, I said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And then... It became flaccid like unto a serpent. And I, the Lord, said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and yet again it became a rod in his hand. And behold, verily, verily, I say unto thee, I was with Onan, when he knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And Nephi, covering his ears with his hands, did say unto the voice in his head, Who speaketh? And the voice of the imaginary friend yet again did come upon Nephi, saying, Nephi, I am the Lord thy God. Behold, inasmuch as thou art so awesome, and not a loser in the least, I have called thee to be a leader of thy brethren, yea, even by stratagem, to beguile them, so that they may conform their thoughts, words, and deeds, according to thy wishes. And Nephi did look in all directions to find from whence the voice did go forth. And he, not finding the source, did, with his hands, cover his ears, and said, Speak, O Lord. For thy servant giveth heed. And it came to pass that the spirit of the imaginary friend did come upon Nephi, saying unto him, Nephi, kill him. And Nephi said, Okay, cool beans. And the voice of Yahweh said, It is better that one man should perish than that a nation should dwindle and perish in unbelief. And Nephi said, Not a problem, chief. And Yahweh said, Laban would be much happier as a ghost. And Nephi said, What part of, I will go and do the things which the Lord hath commanded, for I know that the Lord giveth no commandments unto the children of men, save he shall prepare a way for them, that they may accomplish the thing which he commandeth them. Didst thou not understand? Therefore, Nephi did obey the voice of the non-existent spirit, and took Laban by the hair of the head, and it smite off his head with his own sword. And after that he had smote off his head with his own sword, Nephi took the garments of Laban and put them upon his own body, yea, even every whit. And he did gird on his armor about his loins. And after that he had done this, he went forth unto the treasury of Laban. And as he went forth towards the treasury of Laban, behold, he saw the servant of Laban, whose name was Zoram, which had the keys of the treasury. And he commanded him in the voice of Laban that he should go with him into the treasury. And Zoram, supposing Nephi to be his master Laban, for he beheld the garments and also the sword girded about his loins. And he spake unto Nephi concerning the elders of Judah. 
he knowing that his master Laban had been out by night among them. And Ephi spake unto him as if it had been Laban. And it came to pass that Nephi said unto Zoram, Yo, I'm out of here. And Zoram said, Where goest thou? And Nephi said, Across the street to a shling a shlong, which being interpreted is, I should carry the engravings which are upon the plates of brass to my elder brethren, which are without the wall. And we should tarry in the wilderness, suffering hunger, thirst, and fatigue. And we should take of the daughters of Ishmael to wife. And we should give heed unto a brass ball. And we should construct a ship after the manner in which my imaginary friend shall shew me, that he may carry us across the great waters. And that we should establish a civilization, which at times is a free republic defending individual rights, and at other times a theocracy, which simultaneously practices both the law of Moses and its abolition, the law of Moses having been supplanted by Yehoshua, the Messiah, who shall come six hundred years thence, and incorporate Javan philosophies with Hebrew theology. Dost thou want to come with? And Zoram said, Sure, why not? Now it came to pass, that Nephi did pitch a tent in the wilderness of his pants. Yea, and because of the stiff nakedness of his member, he did commit whoredoms with an incorporeal harlot ghost, which only he, Nephi, could see. Wherefore it came to pass that I, Laman, did enter the cavity of a rock, where Nephi was in the act of knowing the incorporeal harlot ghost. Yea, verily, he did commit onanism with himself, and he knew it not. For behold, he, Nephi, did thrust against the air, and did pant, and did puff, even unto the exhausting of his strength. But notwithstanding, and contrary to the many evidences which we had received, he, Nephi, did verily believe that he spilled not his seed on the ground, yea, he did verily believe that the seed which he, Nephi, did spill on the ground would become a white and exceeding fair and delightsome people.